Okay, so it's a very big game tonight, the final of the BCL. You're aiming for your second consecutive title. What does that mean for you, for your team, and obviously the city of Burgos? That's very important. And the last, the last eight months uh, were amazing for for the club, for the team, uh, for everybody. But uh, now, in this moment, the only important is the the big the big game now with against Karsijaka, great team with a great coach, and I have confidence we we play a good game. What it, what is going to be key to win the game against Karsijaka, a very tough physical team? Yeah, it's a physical team. Um, they have a uh, talent in the guard positions. Uh, Morgan is a big man. Uh, he can play at uh, the pen or he can play shots, the five uh, or of threes. Uh, it's, a, it's a roster complete, but uh, the most important is, is where is um, we play where and we play good in the last in the both. Uh, calls in offense and defense. Gracias por tu tiempo, coach. Thank you. Suerte. Coach, just one game left of the final eight. Yeah. Very big one for yourself and your team. You could seize your first ever Basketball Champions League title. What does that mean for you? Uh, yes, we need one more. I'm excited. Uh, we are going to play against uh, last champion. Uh, we know uh, they have a very good roster and they know how to play the game, how to play together. Uh, well, uh, we are in good shape and we like to play together and we won. We played very good last two games and we won. Uh, I'm sure uh, we will do our best again. Uh, everything will be better uh, for us, I think. Yeah. What's the main focus for the game? What aspect of the basketball game could be most dangerous if we talk about Burgos? Uh, I must say Burgos is very, very good team, but uh, also uh, we have very talented players. Uh, they can play both sides. I mean, I mean, uh, they play more effectively defensive side. But uh, we are ready to play, and uh, we talk each other uh, about this. Uh, now we need one more game. We will see. Thanks for your time, coach. Good luck in the final. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Nizhny Novgorod. This is the Basketball Champions League Final Eight, and this is the final between Pino Karciaka and Herrera San Pablo Burgos. So this is the place to be right now, folks. It's uh, it's title time. Who is going to win it? Is it going to be Herrera San Pablo Burgos? Uh, the first time we get back-to-back -back champions uh, from a, from uh, in this competition, or will it be the first time we ever get a team from Turkey to win it? Peter Karciaka have uh, certainly uh, earned their spot in the final. Boy, they have been inspirational. Uh, just a point to make about Herrera San Pablo Burgos. Not only did they win the BCL Final Eight last year, the Basketball Champions League Final Eight. Uh, they also won the FIBA Intercontinental Cup uh, in Argentina uh, earlier this year, uh, beating Kemza. But here has been the road to the final, and you can see that Karciaka have won against Aaron Nimberg, 
Uh, and then they beat Zaragoza 84-79. And Burgos, uh, well, they won against Hapwell Holon 86-77. And then they knocked off uh, Sig Strasburg 81-70. Uh, so I'm Jeff Taylor joined by Mark Clark and uh, all the wonderful games that we've watched Mark uh, you know we, we've been reminded that Burgos perhaps uh, they've had some struggles uh, at times maybe they haven't looked as good as we expected but at the end of the day uh, even if you win ugly sometimes uh, that that speaks highly uh, of the quality of your team. Uh, absolutely Jeff and, and, and as, as we all know this roster knows how to win. You know, back-to-back -back games. They did it uh, in the last year's final eight. They came, you know, from through qualifying last year to win at the final eight. This year, one of the favorites coming into the competition. The, the roster is great. It's great depth. And Victor Benite got one of the best, most consistent perimeter scorers. You know, Renfro's doing a great job controlling the basketball. They've got balance up front. There's not really a weakness on their roster. The trouble is, for them anyway, that Pina Karasiaka have a roster that's also really balanced and have great perimeter scoring power, have real quality on the inside. You know, Raymar Morgan looks just has looked phenomenal here. And everything really points to me is that they're the starters, everyone's got real talent. Which bench is really going to make the contribution? That was the real strength of Burgos last year. Last few games it struggled, it hasn't really been as effective. Is it going to come to play today? Because if it doesn't, there's strength coming off that Karasiaka bench as well. This is fascinating. It's just so many matchups that look very competitive. This is genuinely too close to call. And president of the Russian Basketball Federation. Well, uh, here at the Basketball Champions League final eight, perhaps one uh, key ingredient for success uh, to win this title is you look at uh, Andrei Kirilenko, the president of the Russian Basketball Federation, coming out and carrying the Basketball Champions League trophy. I'm going to tell you what, man, I'm starting to feel old. I remember when he was just a young buck uh, playing for Russia before he went to the NBA, playing in, uh, playing in Russia, rather. Uh, for Seska and uh, what a uh, career he had and what an inspirational figure and you'll agree with me that just a, a remarkable oh. remarkable performer. Um, oh, I mean, that's a well the standout great, moment Jeff. for well me was great. Eurobasket 2007 when he was the MVP and he led Russia to the title over Spain in Spain. That was incredible. Uh, Jeff, he's one of the world greats, as you say. He's a Hall of Famer. Trouble is, and the really frustrating thing, Jeff, he still looks in great shape. He still looks like he could get out there and play. And obviously now, though, with his role with uh, the Russian Federation, he's given back to the country that gave him everything he needed to get in terms of on these, when he started as, as on that journey that led to him being one of the best. So what I was going to say, uh, Mark, was the key to having success is having that man right there in your team. You know why? Dejan Kravich, <laughs> who we're looking at, has already won this title twice. He won yep. it with Virtus Bologna in year three, and then he won it last year with Ereda San Pablo Burgos. So he's won it twice. So if he gets it today, he will have three titles. But guess what? Uh, there are a couple players that won it with him at Virtus Bologna in year three that also play for Pino Karciak and Tony Taylor and Ahmad Enbai. But uh, for my money, if uh, Ereda San Pablo Burgos is going to win it, this guy right now has the inside track to the MVP. He has been that good, Vitor Benite. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jeff, what is he averaging? 20, 21 points in, uh, per game in the final eight. When he, and the other thing, Jeff, remember right back to that quarterfinal where everything was going against Burgos. In that key moment towards the end of that second quarter, he literally took over his intelligence, his play, his scoring ability, and he kept them in when they were at a low point in a game. Without him at that moment, they might not be here right now. But as you say, leading candidate for MVP. Yeah, and the one thing you think about him is uh, his in incredible, exquisite shooting. But it was a defensive play that he made where he came up with a steal and went in for the fast break that got in there. We just saw Thaddeus McFadden come out. He was the MVP last year. And, of course, Hasio Rivero, uh, just one of the premier big men in Europe, uh, has uh, made the second team uh, star lineup. And uh, Jordan Sacco, it's, uh, this is a... Uh, a mentally tough Ereda San Pablo Burgos team. 
uh, Omar Cook, one of the great point guards in Europe, really, for the past, what, 15 years. He has been dealing it. And, and then Javi Rabbit said, I don't think we gave him enough credit for the job that he did on uh, Bonzi Colson the other night defensively. I mean, he was out there for his defense. He absolutely was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I think Rabbit never, you know, he's one of those players that if you took him out of the roster, you'd know he wasn't there. He has a big impact. When he's there, he's just one of those guys that's doing it defensively. He's a glue guy. He does the things that everybody needs on a team. He sets the right screens. He finishes when he can. He's just a quality player. And sometimes doesn't get the credit he deserves. And again, we you know uh, we heard from John Penyaroya, the coach, uh, talking about what kind of eight months it's been for uh, Burgos, and he just said it's been incredible. I mean, you know, you win the title, the basketball champions league. You win the FIBA Intercontinental Cup. Burgos have gone from being a second division team in Spain in the space of several years to being a premier team in arguably uh, the top domestic league in Europe. Uh, and also, uh, they they are a heavyweight. They are they are throwing some punches in European club competitions, going for back to back titles. But here's Pina Karciaka, a team, uh, a club that has always been well supported back in Ismir. There's Simi Erdin. A uh, famous uh, playing for Turkey's national team, playing in the NBA. Medijan Bersin, also a Turkish national team player, uh, took a real shot the other day in the face. How about this guy right here? I mean, Raymar Morgan, uh, the you know the pride of Lansing, Michigan State. He has really uh, done his Spartan Heritage proud, coming out and, and playing some outstanding basketball. This is a tough-nosed Pinar Karciaka team. I, I tell you what, if, if they weren't tough mentally, they would have they would have lost their semifinal. There's no question about it. Oh, absolutely, Jeff. I mean, they they were faced against a situation down late. What do you do? What well, what they did is what they do every time. They they make great decisions and they've got quality players making those decisions. But they got stops as well, Jeff. Hard nosed is the is the is the best way to describe it. It's not about this strategy, that strategy. Although they're well coached, they're very well coached. They just got down and played defense when they needed to. And as I say, they got real quality. I, I, this, mat, this game is like one of those, uh, we've talked about some of the games previously as games for the purists. This game is everything you ever want in a game. Matchups that are really competitive, balanced rosters, people happen to come in and make contributions off the bench. Both teams incredibly well coached. This has got everything it needs. If it lives up to the billing, we could be looking at one of the great, if not the best, Champions League, Basket Champions League final we've had. And for a first Turkish team, or the first time you have a repeat, that's what it should be. Just one quick word about Karciaka's Tony Taylor. 617 career points, 212 career assists in the Basketball Champions League. Just one of two players with more than 600 points and more than 200 assists in competition history. The other, Jack Hogan Brown. So, and again, don't forget, he knows what it's like to win it, but he and Aman Enbai uh, have celebrated the title. So, uh, the team's exchanging high fives over on the sideline. And uh, referees lined up and in position, Simi Erdin. Jeff, uh, um, the minute silence for the victims of the Second World War. It's uh, Victory in Europe Day. And Russia, as you know, recognizes that that time. Always, at times, you know, keeps things in perspective and impeccably observed by what we've not had for many, many months. 
fans in the gym. Looking forward to what's going to be a great game. Yeah, I think perspective is uh, the best way to look at that. Uh, here's the referee crew for tonight. Eddie Vitor, Adamir Zarapovic, and Johan Rosso from uh, no, France, Bosnia, and Herzegovina in France, respectively. From France, Eddie Vitor, umpire number one. From Bosnia and Herzegovina, Ademir Zorapovic. And we will also see... France, Johan Rosso. The standby referees from Serbia, starting fives, uh, and the basketball technical starting fives for both teams Russia, here coming up. Serbia and I don't know that we'll see a change in the starting fives or not from these teams. But Mark, it's been, uh, I see the Spanish flag there and uh, Ufu Sarija. And again, I don't think he gets enough credit for being as good a coach as he is. And again, just going back oh. to when he was coaching Turkey and almost leading Turkey pat, uh, to victory over the USA and was really, really robbed of that by his best player, uh, Jetty Osman, missing uh, all his free throws oh. at the end of the game. And I hate saying that because I love Jetty Osman. I think he is an unbelievable talent. It was just kind of like a weird situation where he just, uh, it just didn't happen. And Solarjow was kind of like, what more can I do? You know, we're in position to win it. But um, anyway, those are the, the breaks and hope, you know, from his standpoint and Pino Karciaka's standpoint, they're hoping that the basketball guys smile on them today. Uh, so perhaps he gets some uh, deserved recognition. Starting five, Mark. Well, as you said, Jeff, uh, no real change, but he's gone very big. Sometimes he'll only go with the one big, but with uh, Klavich and Rivera together, I can see why he wants to go that way. Uh, they're, they're, they're very conscious of Raymar Morgan and, and going with the big roster and the big start and the big lineup. Obviously, he's got the scoring potential at the one and the two. Uh, rather say they're doing the work as he always does at the, at the small forward spot. Powerful, powerful starting lineup. But that tells you how much respect they have for Raymar Morgan. Vitor Benite, 21 points, 3.5 rebounds, shooting 73% inside the arc in the final eight. And uh, his first remarks uh, after the semifinal uh, were to praise Javi Rabaceda uh, for the job that he did on Bonzi Colson. So here's a guy that understands what wins games, as well as uh, Alex Renfro. Very consistent. Look at that. He is an assist man. The other man. great thing about Renfro as well, Jeff, he's, he is the assist man. You leave him alone because you think he's going to pass. He can now the three. I mean, they've got potentials. And then McFadden coming off the bench to compliment Renfro and Benite. They are so strong in that guard spot that they that generates most of the things that Coach Penaloya looks to do with his teams. They want to play high tempo. They want to push. They want to put shots up. They've got big guys you can run. Very talented group. Uroy is 52 years of age. He's coaching this Burgos team since 2019. So Pino Karciaka with Kennedy, Tony Taylor, Sec Henry, Raymar Morgan, and Amat Embai in the starting five. Uh, well, Jeff, Embai is going to have to do some work, Jeff. Embai is going to have defensively, he's going to have to do some work. Sec Henry's been a revelation for me. I, I thought he was a good player. I thought he was a great player. His numbers from the three-point line have been so important to Karasiaka making this final. They really do need to stretch the floor, and he enables them to do it. And and by in uh, in shot, uh, as we were saying, he's uh, the importance of Mbai is going to be, I think, a decisive factor. If he scored in double digits in his last nine BCL games, however, Jeff. Look at the starting lineup that he's going up against. He's going to have to do some work at the defensive end against as powerful of an inside combination that uh, Burgos can put on the floor. And uh, I think if I'm Ufak Sarge now, I know in the fact that they're going to go that way. And I think he's he's probably in his own mind there thinks, say, hey, I'm, I'm in this game. I've got a little bit of a psychological advantage here right now. They've changed the way slightly they may do things. I think that uh, Penaloya making some adjustments will give Sarachka a lot of confidence with his roster. He's confident with his roster anyway. And as you said, a coach that does not get as much credit as I think he deserves. I think he's flat out a great coach. 
I, mean, I, I got to be honest with you, Mark. I thought it was game up the other night in the semifinal. I thought I thought that uh, Zaragoza had uh, gotten to grips with the game. They had put the clamps on Sec Henry, and it was going to be their game. And uh, they were mentally tough, and often that is a reflection of the coach. And he yep. showed a lot of trust into some players that perhaps uh, the wider basketball public doesn't know that much about. You know, the likes of uh, the team uh, yep. who came out, hit a big three, came out and and did so many different things. Obviously, everybody knows uh, Bearson, uh, but Mahir Agva, for example, came in and played huge minutes, uh, made some yep. plays defensively. So, you know, don't <laughs> underestimate uh, the impact of Sarija, the coach of, of, this, of this team. Jeff, how often, you know, in, in Basel Champions League uh, games, and it's in the Basel Champions League rules, do we, we end up talking about local players, players that have been developed in that country? How often, when it comes down to a tough, you know, really mental situation, do you look at those guys who are really bought into the club, really bought into representing their organization? They're the guys that come through it, and it's great that it's in the rules for the Basel Champions League in terms of those players, but regardless of that, clubs need them. You know, you need those guys that the fans relate to, that uh, the, the coach understands and trusts, and that's exactly what Karasiaka have got. It's, it's every single year when we get into these big games, someone with that background comes through with key performances. So the first team to reach the Basketball Champions League final in consecutive seasons. Herrera, San Pablo Burgos. Remember, they did it last year after making it through the qualifying rounds just to play in the regular season. Every team going next year in the qualification rounds could be that team. We said that last year, Jeff, didn't we? Second Turkish team to reach the BCL final, Karasiaka. You know, Turkey, great basketball nation. Uh, it's just got every ingredient you would need for a major final, which is what this is. As a player and as a coach and a club, you're, you know, it's the, it's the trophies that you win that are what people remember more than anything. I mean, yeah, you can get a individual honor, you can yeah, do something, but you know, you want a cup, you want a, a league title, you want a basketball champions league, a European cup, a European title, it's it's what you can always look back on and say, yeah, he was in that basketball champions league winning team uh, in year number yeah. five. So, and it, it does kind of underline with Kravic, who uh, isn't probably the best known of the Serbian players, but nevertheless is uh, really, really got a, a few uh, gongs uh, beside his name, considering he also won the FIBA Intercontinental Cup. So, yeah, absolutely, big times. Jeff. Absolutely. Big times for Burgos and also Pino Karciaka now with an opportunity uh, to raise uh, the profile of their team. talked about him uh, before sixth all-time point scores 670 and uh, that number will no doubt go up in this game Peter Karciaka will run her up in the FIBA Euro Challenge back in 2012-2013 uh, campaign of course they've won the Turkish League a couple of times back in 1986-87 and then 2014-2015. And how about this guy? He's gritting through it. Hurt his hand in that uh, quarterfinal. Uh, but you know what? You play hurt in games like this, don't you? Uh, yeah. If you're hurt, you're playing. You definitely are playing.
Well, good evening, everybody, uh, and welcome to Nizhny Novgorod, Russia. This is the Basketball Champions League final in year five between Pino Karciaka and Areta San Pablo Burgos. San Pablo Burgos in the dark uniforms and trying to win the title for the second year in a row. Taking on Pino Karciaka. Just a, a real tough team. And a goal interference called on Raymar Morgan, who uh, blocked the ball after it went off the backboard. Uh, Jeff, that's a nice move by uh, Rivero. Sweet little spin to the baseline. A little too easy if I'm being critical of him. By he's really got to do a bit more physical, bit more physicality at the defensive end than that. I'm not in by the France international. Whoa! He puts his team in front. And that's where they have the plus because he's got Rivero extended guarding him. So you know, it's, it's a pick your poison moment. Rivero, meanwhile, going to work again and getting the foul on Mbai. Rivero, uh, his stock has gone up big time this year. And I think it's a tough matchup for Mbai, who, despite being yeah. athletic, I think Rivero's uh, strength and size. Uh, and athleticism is uh, perhaps uh, not fully appreciated. I think he's showing it right uh, now. I, 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 he, the only trouble he has, as, as I think uh, we've pointed out in every game, is that from the free throw line, he's not your, he's not your, uh, your best free throw shooter as such. So, you know, if he's, uh, if he's only going one for two from the line, as long as you don't pick up too many fouls, as long as you share your fouls, I think we might see him on the line a, a few times tonight. Yeah, he only came into this game shooting 59% at the free throw line. DJ Kennedy fouled from behind by Javid Rabaceda. Morgan inbounds the basketball to Tony Taylor. Pulls up and Renfro rebounds the miss. Looks like it, is that a 3 2 zone being employed by Pino Karciaka? Okay, no. That's uh, more, man. It's more saggy. Yeah, they're going to sag in a little bit. It's like they're going to pick the guy that want to try and shoot it. Yeah. So for a minute there, it looked like it was a 3-2. Anyway, DJ Kennedy oh, gets the download and swatted. Not in this house, says Dan Kravic. Renfro pulls up on the break. Can't do it. You can't just get back and look. He's got to get back and, and channel out. And you can't leave Renfro open. He's, he, he, he might not be the best shooter off the dribble. But if you give him time and space, he's just going to fill it up. Well, the foul called on. Is it Kravic? He raised his hand. Yeah, Kravic on the drop. Yeah, yeah. This is Kravic getting the swat. That's the block, yeah. Jeff, I'd have thought that they'd gone the other way around. I'd have thought they'd have given Rivero to guard Morgan, not Klavich, but uh, interesting to go that way around. I know that means that Kravich will have to get his feet outside the keyway and that that problem. Wow, tough drive by Mbai. Yeah, like that's it. the problem trying to guard Mbai. Whoever guards him out of the bigs from uh, Burgos is, is struggling to guard him on the perimeter. Well, Mbai went from probably not being the most celebrated of French players in the world to uh, putting himself in the starting lineup for the France national team uh, at the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2019 because of his uh, performances in, in the Basketball Champions League. He was that good. And another foul has been called. Of course, he also played for France in some of the qualifiers. Yeah. 
for Vincent Collet. But again, it's uh, Rivero who uh, knows uh, he'll probably end up getting a few trips to the line tonight. Uh, but Karciaka picks up the foul. That's two fouls on them. Two apiece, in fact. Benite goes in, scores with the left hand. Just makes it look so easy, doesn't he? Wow. You got to think Raymar Morgan could have helped because uh, it was Rivero in the corner. Could have helped top him. Wow, the three-pointer for Raymar Morgan. You think mainly about Raymar going to work down low, but well, Raymar's battling away with uh, Rivero. Rivero says, I want some of this, and now another foul called on Raymar Morgan. That's uh, that's not a great number, not a great call for uh, Karis Yaka. There's two fouls on Morgan, and um, you know, my comments before the game about you know that have the quality of the bench has become a big factor. I wasn't. I don't know if they've got. I don't know if they've got any rotation that would deal with Raymar Morgan if he goes. If he has to sit down. Benite misses from the arc. Remember, he did have four fouls pretty early on in the semifinal, but he was able to make it through the game. But this is a different uh, challenge, I think, for him, going up against a quality big like Rivero. Here he is again. He's going back to work. Passes it back outside to Benite. And Benite falls down, knows he can't stand up, gets it back to Rivero, who steps behind the arc. And excellent work by Rabaceda to knock it out to Renfro, but this time the long rebound collected by Sec Henry. Jeff, they might use that 2 3 zone that you thought you saw uh, earlier. They might use it a bit if uh, Morgan does pick up sort of foul trouble. He showed it out of bounds just then. There's no way Burgos is going to do anything about from playing man to man. Oh, boy, that was tough play by Raymar Morgan, but he was fouled beforehand. There's the captain, Simi Aridin. Great pass. It's a super pass because it, it, it just made everything easy because he'd sealed his spot, held his space. We got Salvo in the game early, Jeff. Because Rabbit has yeah. picked up two. One of, those, uh, one of those X Factor type players. Tony Taylor. Oh, what a rebound by Kennedy. Gets it back again, gets it over to Morgan. Ball wouldn't go down. Benite, oh, that time missed it badly. You know, Karciaka. If I get his share of shots here, Salvo with the rebound. Tough drive by Renfro. How quick was that? No one slowed him up in transition, just went. That's quick from Renfro. And uh, as we've said before, he's not just a passer. That's why they say Renfro on the go. <laughs> and the double team uh, ends up with uh, Rivero picking up the foul. Morgan comes out, Simierdin comes in. Simierdin is. Uh, that ends it. Yeah, a huge. That ends important you know, he, here, Jeff. You know, he's, yeah, yeah. he's got to bring that experience. He's really got. He's just. He's got to be active. He just can't be that big Simierdin we've seen. You know, years. He's got to be active tonight. If he's active, he could be a real factor in this game. Both ends of the floor. Get a, get on the glass. Pick up some fouls, maybe if you have to. But he's got to be active. 
I thought he was decent in the uh, semifinal win for Pino Pino Carciaco. Yeah. Here's a uh, M by. Good sign, Jeff. He, he, he tried to compete on the glass. He's, he's going to make a presence. That's going to help. It's Burgos with the uh, early lead here and possession. Six minutes into it, Renfro. And Pinero is like, who's the foul on? Uh, Sacco uh, rolled, and, and they rolled too early, so he, he cleared out as he rolled. And I think that's uh, that's that moving screen stuff again that uh, has been called consistently. Let's, let's put it that way. Oh. Sheridan picks it up, turns, goes up, takes the body. And the foul on Sacco. Gordon Sacco really didn't figure too much in the quarterfinal win, but did play more in the last game, the Congo International. No, but the foul sacks are called on uh, Miguel Salvo. Sorry, not Sacco. Yeah, he, the Sats, yeah, Salvo came over and was a little late and uh, very outsized, should we say, by Semi Erdin. Semi Erdin with, uh, doesn't matter how long you played in this game, sometimes you do things like that. And his shot just to graze the net. Gets the second one to go. atmosphere here in uh, cultural entertainment complex Nagorni you're number five of the basketball champions league Burgos going for two in a row will they get it Renfro drives in nope Kennedy doesn't rebound it oh did the ball go off of Kennedy that's what Penyaroy is claiming I think Penyaroy is right I, uh, if you have I think I'm sure they're gonna get it yeah no, no drama. The two French officials uh, have a little chat yep. while they're, you know, the, Ukra uh, the Ukrainian official on the far side just sorts it out with Coach <laughs> Penaroya and everything's fine. Everybody's Look happy except for Coach. <laughs> it just goes to show how absolutely crucial they view each possession as yeah, in a yeah. game like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it yeah. is important. <laughs> yeah. And all it was, I think, yeah. just a pure... Pure sort of mistake. That's all right. They talked about it. Got the right call. They got the right call in the end, which is the most important thing. It's great that the officials, uh, as long as the, the uh, coach and everybody doesn't get too carried away, they are listening. They're aware that you know there might be a point to make. Oh, Renfro. Couple of misses here, and uh, Horton, who's checked in, uh, gets the ball back in to Renfro. Renfro again drives in, hands it off. Oh boy, not a, catch, a clean catch. And Sacco. It's not going to count. Three seconds, is it? No, he traveled. Okay. There's, there's one, oh, there's yeah, two. Yeah, he He's did, chased yeah. his pivot foot a couple of times. Omar Cook now, premier assist man. Now, last career, year in the final, Jeff. he came out and was uh, electric from three-point range, Omar Cook. Yeah. Wonderful to see that tonight. Absolutely. Big game, big player. So. Jeff, you see that when Jordan Sacco comes in the game, he, know, he knows his responsibility is to be aggressive, to be active, to try and generate. So when he switches or shows hard on the screen, he goes after the ball. When Rivero or Kravitz, they're, they're more, they've got to protect the ring more. The, the, the foul count doesn't always worry, worry him as much as it does them. So it's real noticeable the way he's trying to get lift off the bench. That Henry going for his three, not there. Bearson, however, Medijan Bearson with the rebound. Super rebound. Henry 
Jared and spinning away, going right at Jordan Sacco, and the shot clock expires. Uh, would you say that this tempo is favoring Karciaka? I, I, I think the game is favoring Karciaka at the moment. I'm not, I'm not sure. I think both teams would, would like to uh, be up tempo. I think that the, the thing that's really noticeable is that the defense is, is pretty much is winning at the moment. People are having to make great plays like that one. And like you just asked the question. I think you just got. I think you just got told the answer. People coming off the bench making a contribution. And McFadden is like so, got so many points in uh, in the locker. Now an offensive foul called on Peter Karciaka. So Simierden. Well, that was McFadden. His first three of the game. Nice. And 13 9, Jeff. 1.30 to go. Defense has definitely been, like it often is in the first quarter of a final. You know, defense has possibly won the day at the moment. <laughs> Sacco was able to get it in and jump over the advertising uh, hoarding. Burgos have uh, trailed in both of their uh, first two games at the final eight, but come back, come back to win. Zach like Henry, oh boy, went to Akva and uh, Akva not able to catch it. Now the three pointer for Horton and Salvo yeah, called for the push. This is the man they need to get going, I think. In his first two games, he really was key. Obviously, Raymar Morgan carried the team in the quarterfinal, but it was when Sec Henry got hot that things changed dramatically. And the same thing happened uh, in the semifinal when he went six of six from, I think it was six of six from deep in the first half. That's definitely the point. Uh, Jeff, that uh, in, the, in that quarterfinal, they needed someone to step up from the perimeter. They weren't, there was no balance to the scoring as such. And he was the man who really gave them that. The team is going to come into the game. Speaking to Sanja. So he's guarding the basketball as uh, Cook brings it up the floor. Bounce pass from Cook, and then the reach on uh, Pinar Karciaka and the foul. I think if I, I mean, I know that Cook got hot from uh, three-point range in the final last year, and he does, he can go off. I've seen him go off in other big games, but, I, you know, I, I don't know. I might be tempted to sag on him until he makes one, because he's looking to make those passes. Yes. Kravitz makes the first. Yeah, I, I, th I think the, the issue, Jeff, is 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 more that um, you're happy for him to shoot the ball, but you can't give him like too much space to see the pass because he, he can he can beat you as you say with the quality of the pass. If you step off him too much, he'll just his first look is to pass, and he'll often find if you're running uh, good sets, good options. Players will come up open. Omar Cook's always going to find it unless you've got him, you know, worried about the pressure he's under. So it, it's it's about pressure and making Omar Cook play. I think is the big thing. In by I caught with the rebound. In by drives in. Quality stuff from the France international. I'm on in by playing big minutes here for Pinar Karciaka, as you'd expect, seven points leading them. Maxime Salas in the game. He passes over to Barrera, and that's how it finishes. So Alex Barrera also checking in at the end of the first quarter. 
kind of feel like both teams are feeling each other out right now. The Raiders San Pablo Burgos, though, 10 minutes in the book, and they're on top 15 to 13. Uh, stats wise, it's for Karasiaka, it's not exactly something you're going to write home about. You've been to the free throw line four times, you're only two from eight and two from five, so you, you're not exactly got yourself going. And these highlights of that, those first quarters, gonna, is going to tell you that, Jeff. It's neither team has come out and had a lot of rhythm offensively. People have had to make very big plays, like first play, baseline, nice penetration. It's all very much individual based plays to create and break down the defense or letting go of the shot with someone's hand all over you. And that's credit to the defense. And the other thing you've got to remember, Jim, okay, these teams have come in. No time really to prepare and to scout. This is going to be a very quick, we've watched the last two games, this is how we're going to do it. Players have had to respond to that really quickly. You've got to say defensively, both coaches have done a great job and saying, well, this is what we're going to allow, this is what we're not, and then players have put it on the floor. We've got a low-scoring game that at some point the offense will click into gear. Hopefully that's going to be the second quarter because they've now, they've, they've now forgot it's a final. They're now just playing a basketball game and they're playing each other, not the event. And this is set up so nicely, all the things we've talked about. Everybody's in, everybody's ready to play. And all the weaknesses and strengths have all been played out in that first quarter. And as you described it, this is about people filling each other out. It's the first couple of rounds of a heavyweight boxing match where you know, you're trying to see what the opponent's got, what, how quick they are, how they defend you. That's exactly where we are now. I'd expect this to get a little bit more, uh, more rhythm offensively in this second quarter and buy it nice seven points. And he hasn't been exposed at the defensive end, which is almost as important. Yeah, I mean, he, he creates problems uh, with his ability to get to the yep. basket, as we just saw. Uh, the yep. key for him will be able to hit that jump shot as well, I would imagine. Yep. Uh, but even so, the, another key will be these players like this. Batim spinning his way into the lane. Boy, his confidence seems to be going through the roof at the final eight. Maxime Salash misses. Belarus International. Oshiaka, all nodded, and Seth Henry hasn't even gotten going yet. Here he is in the paint. Excellent work by Agva, but I think he stepped out of bounds. And that yeah. for me is, again, one of the keys. You know, this is the, the, uh, the most anonymous bench possibly in the Basketball Champions League. Peter Karshiaka and Sarija is relying on them big time. They are getting it done. McFadden released it, tried to make it look a little awkward, I think, so he'd get a, a foul called. And the referees did not Defense bite. There, though. there he goes again. I'm on in by. It's a problem when he's getting to the basket. You go out and guard him. He's blowing right past the defense. McFadden pulls up at the elbow. Hagfa <laughs> reached over and helped Bearson so he didn't fall over. <laughs> Lending him a helping hand. You can see that Henry very keen to get involved, but he's being guarded by Cook closely. And this time, Bearson. Good, strong move by Medijan Bearson. Jeff, that, like Burgos historically or throughout the, the, the season have been one of the most efficient offensive teams. There's only one real game that they struggled, and that was the loss, the deciding loss to uh, Tenerife in the, uh, in the playoffs. And Tenerife kept them to something just around 80 points uh, per 100 possession, which is like way under what, where Burgos would normally be in a very similar way to the way Karasiaka are doing it now. Up the floor, 
slowing them down, reducing the amount of time they have in the half court to run the offense they want to run, and then ask people to make plays, but without the initial sets in the offense. And that's exactly what's happening at the moment. Like the shot from McFadden as you get the out of bounds uh, open look. And it's it's really, it's, it, and that's a coaching a coaching decision in terms of by uh, Sarajar the way they're going to play. And they're really doing a great job at doing it. The other point that's really important is to be aggressive as they are. Burgos don't overhelp. They really do rely on their defense one on one to contain the offense. So it's great for Karasiaka at the moment. Lots of point, lots of things that are going very well for them early in the second quarter. Well, Sadejao wants to uh, discuss things with his players, so he calls a timeout here. And uh, intriguing first 12 minutes uh, that we've been able to witness. Both teams with two mates from deep. Especially with Onurak. When you get to the crossover, direct all the way, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Mbai really has, uh, you know, hit the early three, and here he is getting inside with the drive, the penetration. You go out and guard him, he's going to go past. He's done it three times, in fact. Yep. Same thing again, Jeff. You can see on the replays, no black shirt in help. No one coming over right. to help the man defending the ball. And if you're aggressive and you, you attack that, that, they've got to get a reaction out of uh, out of Burgos. If Burgos continually can't contain that penetration, they're going to have to make an adjustment. And then that gives you, that gives Sec, uh, Sec Henry the chance to just move, see the basketball get open, and they'll find him from the... So out of the timeout, it's uh, Batim with the basketball being guarded by Benite. And Almat Mbai, this is from the top of the key. Huge minutes being played by Agba, allowing Raymar Morgan uh, to, well, rest and avoid picking up a third foul but at some point you know he's going to come back in the team picks up the foul here for Karshiaka okay so Raymar Morgan has checked back in so you know also uh, Tony Taylor comes back in Raymar Morgan goes to the bench he comes back out and Karshiaka are winning. So, small victory yep. really for, for them and for Sarija. Sarija. Yep, same call. And Coach Penaloya can uh, have a discussion about it and comment that this call is being, this, this stuff, that, that type of call is being made all year. And uh, he may think it's a bad decision based, but the call is consistent. And that's, uh, that's all you can ask. This is where the toughness of a player like Tony Taylor is, uh, is, is proved because he needs to match the physicality. Look at the spin. And Aqua went up for the board, but only Rivera and his big hands were coming down with the basketball. And now the team with a little bit of a uh, Hand checking, okay. bumping. Yeah. Second foul, on the run, team. Referees call that, I think, if they call that at the right time, Jeff, that just stops the game getting messy around the ball, which is important. Benite at the stripe, and there's Raymar Morgan, rested, refreshed and ready to go. Tony Taylor, 
Strong with the basketball again. Fouled by Cook. And every opportunity Karasiaka have got, they're going to attack it, especially after a miss, especially when they've had the chance before the defense is set. They are really being the aggressor, more, more basic, you could say, more, more direct. And uh, it really is the moment is, uh, is, is paying dividends, even though it's only a 17-15 game, really low scoring. But uh, it's, uh, it's definitely... Uh, the first one. It's definitely setting the tone, Jeff. Definitely setting the tone that uh, is good for Karasiaka. So, Marka, Omar Cook at 39 years of age, playing in a basketball championship final. Uh, and, uh, and again, looking like he's 29. <laughs> for uh, uh, it's, it's, Beggars whatever believe, he, doesn't whatever it? he does, Jeff, he, he could sell it for a fortune. He's like in the best shape <laughs> of his life. Rivero. He really is, isn't he? Horton. How about that? One of the advantages to having Horton. He's got the size. He's a stretch four. Yep. Morgan's going to see if he can handle him down low. Morgan goes off one foot. And Agva. I've actually stayed in the game when uh, Raymond Morgan came back into the game. Yeah, coach not happy with the fadeaway. He didn't want the fadeaway. It's not what he's really preaching at the moment. He'll get something a little bit more aggressive than that. They go to the basket, try to get the foul call. Rivero open, short. No, they're not shooting lights out, are they? No. But that's not a primary option for Rivero at the foul line. It's not something that uh, Burgos you know, would say is one of their primary options offensively. Burgos right now shooting 28.57% uh, from the floor. They're having a tough time. Uh, and to be honest, Pino Karciaka not much better at 6 of no. 20. And it's six of 20, Jeff, because of shots like that. The defense did a good job with the screen, challenging the shot. Nothing, no real movement coming off it, and therefore you end up with a poor shot. And that's why we're at 19-18. We're halfway through the second quarter. No, it's not less, any less fascinating because the score's fairly low. Shoot it and misses everything. And they are uh, right now making look uh, making Burgos look like a bad team on offense. Absolutely, largely because they're containing the ball. Tony Taylor, tough drive, not there, but Agba fouled on the putback. Jeff, you, you, you were singing his praises from the semi-final. On that whole penetration, all he's thinking of now is, if he misses, I'm getting it. And he gets position, goes up strong, powers before the defense has a chance to get set again. He knows his role. It's, it's just great to see people come in and just perform a function at a high level. And that's what he's doing at the moment. He's just got to make the throw. Now, a Coach Penaroy is, is searching for a roster. Omar Cook is 39 and looks... 29. Agva, in fact, is 24, but looks 34, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a veteran out there. <laughs> He's playing like and, a uh, veteran, definitely. And he only had three games this season when he scored points. In fact, there were a lot of games he didn't even play. This is uh, what's interesting to me, that he's uh, actually become quite an integral part of this uh, process. And his... Uh, Focus and uh, size, strength, ability to uh, apply, I think, what his coach wants out there. Keeping it simple, like you said, he knows he's going for the offensive rebound. Yep. Very good stuff to watch. Wow, 
a chance to buy the ball off to Benite, who fouled as he goes up by Sick Henry. And you don't want to foul the jump shooter, but no. uh, with this, Benite has a chance to tie it up. I mean, they all knew what was happening there. Benite had passed it. He's going to come off two screens. He gets it. He's going to put it up. Don't foul him. He's that good a player. Challenge him, yes, but don't foul the jump shot. I mean, it's one of those you know, golden rules, especially when you have no chance. Henry had no chance of getting a piece of that. So Benite has been Burgos' main man. Probably most people would say at this basketball Champions League final eight, and he has just tied it with a three-point play. Boy, Sick Henry would love to get involved in the offense, but Tony Taylor takes what the defense gives him. Yep. Travic spins, turns, Medijan Beerson now brings it forward. Tony Taylor again gets his feet wet, gets swatted this time by Kravich. Oh, and they find wide open down low. Salvo. So it's interesting Great he's got both Kravich though. and Salvo in at the same time, as well as Horton. Yeah, he's Big prepared team. to leave uh, Ravacetta on the bench with those those two fouls. I mean, that's, I, I can only think that's why Salvo was in the game. Tony Taylor again. Over to Pearson. Holy cow, he just sees the path open up and just takes it to the rim. Great play, and Kravic wisely didn't go for the, the reach. Well, he, he did, in fact, but he pulled it back just in time so he didn't get a foul. Intriguing final. Absolutely, Jeff. That's, that's like the best chess way for it. Yes, absolutely. And you saw again, you know, Burgos, no help, no one no one on the help line because they're, 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 they've decided that they want to they want to play one on one on the ball. They don't want to help off too much just in case people get going from the perimeter. But what uh, Karasiaka are doing is attacking the ring. And they're attacking the ring as often as they possibly can. And uh, it's uh, both teams having all sorts of issues getting the shots they want. But then the aggression or the aggressive play from Karasiaka is getting the higher percentage finish. But we're still only talking about a two point game. And it's. Uh, uh, it's tough. It's, uh, it, it's as we said at the beginning of the game, it's too close to call because both teams, have, they match up so well. The balance of the rosters is very similar. Good city officials enjoying it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy that was really causing problems putting the ball on the deck and getting to the rim at first was Amat Enbai. We know Tony yeah. Taylor has the capacity to drive, but uh, maybe Beerson has uh, the size. Um, he's also got that good shot. You have to go out and guard him. And here he is, just taking it all the way down the lane. This little trap has really taken Burgos out of any sort of offensive rhythm. Because now there's only 14 seconds on the clock, and now they're only just starting to run anything that they want to run. Well, they get it to the corner, Salvo. And instead of rebounding the ball, uh, Pinar Karsiaka batted out to the perimeter. Again, eight on the shot clock. Renfro. And the shot was quick by Kravich, and now Medijan Bearson thought about pushing it quickly and brings it back out. Don't point down to six, and by. Oh, look at the rebound by Medijan Bearson, but he stepped out of bounds. Coming down with the basketball. I think so, yes. 
And Mbai went down, I think, trying to get a foul called. To be careful with that. They have called one one flop in this tournament on Rodrigo San Miguel. So Kennedy back in the game. It's Agva, Beerson, Kennedy, Mbai, and Taylor. For uh, Peter Kashiaka. Also McFadden back in the game. Orton, Kravich, Renfro, and Salva. Here's uh, Renfro taking it strong to the basket for Burgos. Quick. Again, Renfro shows how quick that first step is. No chance to help. Pearson again. Gets to the baseline. Passes back to Mbai. Now Kennedy has to launch it right at the shot clock buzzer. Low scoring final. Renfro. McFadden on the baseline. I think Pearson might have given up on that one a little too soon. Can't just allow uh, McFadden an open look like this. Look at this. I guess he was expecting yeah, some uh, help, possibly, from Kennedy. Uh, it's it's one of those things, you know, pulling up between the three-point line and the edge of the key. It's one of those areas of the game that is a little bit not not trendy. Let's call it not trendy. It's, and uh, when you've got something like the pattern, though, it's automatic. If you're not challenging that that little penetration, he's just going to make it. But what a what a game we've got, Jeff, in terms of how it's set up now for the second half. Yeah, it's low scoring, but that's not because it's a low level. The intensity defensively, the effort defensively, the way that both these teams are containing the ball is just it's just great to watch. I mean, the defensive effort one on one is uh, exceptional, and. Uh, there was a little bit of early foul trouble, but that look, that's all been looked after. No one's really picked up the third, so we're not looking to try and manage a game in the second half. We, we are, both teams should be going at it with plenty of fouls to give, and we, we won't get into foul trouble. That's that's the hope anyway, because then we've got so everybody on the floor that you want to have on the floor. So remember, Karciaka won it in year, uh, excuse me, Karciaka won their first uh, quarter, they won their quarter final over here in Nipper, 84 to 73, then had to dig deep to do that, and then they had to dig deep to beat uh, Casa de Mont at 84 to 79. And Burgos won over Apo Unit Credit Holon, 86 to 77. Now the ball thrown out of bounds. They're trying to get it to the team. Play was there. Just overthrow or miss time, but the play was there. Burgos also beat Six Strasbourg in the semifinal. The final seconds ticking off the clock. And another foul call to grab or a push. We better hope it's not on Raymar Morgan. First small fall, number 21. No, I think it's uh, Tony, Tony, Taylor. Tony Taylor was the foul. But it stopped the clock and puts Renfro at the line. And what this does is now he will have this free throw and there will still be a seven second difference on the game clock and the shot clock. So Burgos could in fact get the ball back. Little run here right at the end. They were trailing 25 23. So 6 0 run. Morgan just goes strong to the basket. I wonder if Burgos thought he was going to wait a little bit because nobody really picked him up. Well, he's got the Kravitz matchup. Well, don't think Kravitz can deal with him in that type of situation. And, uh, Morgan's too good, too big. 
are too strong as opposed to too big. First big move really of the game for Raymar Morgan. It's been a quiet game for him, in fact. He's got five points, three rebounds. The Burgos team has trailed uh, in their other two games here in the final eight at halftime. Right now they're up four. And uh, with a chance now, Pino Karshaki can get to within three. Twenty point three seconds. We still have a two point game. Twenty seven, twenty nine. Oh, excuse me, it's twenty nine, twenty seven. San Pablo Burgos on top over Pino Karshaki. So they can pull it within I mean, one here. He makes this. One of the good things about the Raymar Morgan numbers, Jeff, he's only played nine minutes. But he's, he 's hasn't picked up any more than the than the two fouls that he had. He's only played the nine minutes at the minute. He should be very ready for the second half, very fresh. They got Erden hasn't had to play too much. So yeah, we are gonna have a second half where it's you know one two point game at the half. We just set up, you know, the whole season comes down to those twenty minutes. And this is a good move. They're going to get him out, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. They're going to bring Kennedy back in so Morgan doesn't pick up the third foul. So Burgos came up with a play. And uh, let's see if they can execute it. Starts with uh, Horton faking the screen. Then he just steps over, gets a wide open look. And they've left a little bit of time. They've got to put it up in by. I don't think he got off in time. So. Well, there you go. It's uh, almost as close as it can be. Reda San Pablo Burgos on top, 29-28 in a low-scoring final of the Basketball Champions League. Ladies and gentlemen, it's squeeze time right now. Pick up your phones, scan the QR code, and enjoy our game. Uh, well, the numbers offensively, Jeff, uh, way below everybody's averages, and uh, that's the defense, that's the quality of the defense, it's been great from that perspective, everything's going to be tight, the stats are just going to confirm what a game we've got, the 28-29. And Bai started and Renfro both started like the house on fire, and then everybody's, you say, calm down, cool down. It's just set up for a tremendous second half. Well, the fifth final of the Basketball Champions League. Can't believe we're already having this. <laughs> what has happened to all that time, Mark? Seems like we're in Antwerp uh, uh, just the other day. And uh, uh, well, that's no. because we had such a great time in Antwerp. It was just Absolutely. lingers in the memory very strongly. What a great final four that was. Great hosts. So Vitor Benite uh, has been uh, the main man really uh, for the first couple of games. And uh, he's had a couple of big moments in this one. And by, as you said, started very strong for Pino Karciaka. Renfro has been steady in all three games. The team has been uh, explosive. Look at this move. He likes his matchup against Omar Cook. So one of the many drives that they've had to the basket. That was another one uh, from Mbai. As you said, uh, the trap has prevented uh, Burgos from really getting into their flow offensively. But uh, Benite, the exceptional player that he is, uh, able to uh, get the three-point play there. You know who hasn't gotten it going yet? Sec Henry. Yeah, not at and all. Willie, that's yeah, the question. It's like, 
I, I do think it's uh, if the game stays as is, it's going to be tough for him because they're not they're not stepping off him at all, and therefore he's going to have to make great plays. And I think it, the thing that's clear in all these best plays is everything's about tremendous athleticism or attack to the basket, individual one-on-one -on -one play to break the defense down. Both teams have just taken each other out of what they want to run. And it's a uh, testament to the defensive prep, yep. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how or who makes the adjustments at half time to change the way the game's being played. Because I'm sure both coaches are... Well, I'm not sure which coach will be the happier coach. I mean, Sarajar's got that little trap on. He's being aggressive. He's probably getting most of the things he wants. I don't think Penaroy is getting the type of game he wants playing at all. It's not the sort of Burgos basketball. Well, Penaroy has been able to make some adjustments at halftime of the first two games because remember, Burgos trailed each of those and uh, they responded in a big way, but a lot of their success was about uh, passing the ball into the paint. Uh, it just doesn't look like this Pinar Karsiaka team. They look pretty stingy. Uh, yeah. Very difficult team to operate against. Uh, they do give away the occasional penetration, like right there, but uh, overall, they've been tough. Renfro has been, uh, again, consistent in this final eight and has done his job. And meanwhile, Mbai, as you would expect, uh, Champions League winner. And uh, has come out and really set the tone, I felt like. You know, I, you know, yep. That first quarter was just really important for this team, and he really did carry them offensively. Yep, absolutely right, Jeff. And, and he's got the ability to shoot the ball. And we, we talked about the matchups, you know, and, 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 and by down the defensive end, we're a little bit concerned about that hasn't been an issue. Down the offensive end, they can't guard him one-on-one. -on -one. There's no way that they have the ability to stop him breaking them down on the dribble. And then it's just a case of how, they, how, how they're going to deal with that after. Great game. Well set up now. 29-28. San Pablo Burgos on top at halftime. The telegraph pass picked off by Rabaceda. But the swat for Ish Wainwright. He was able to play him, play with it. Somehow gets his way in, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. With a yeah, that is a smooth player. move. Jefferson looking very presidential. He puts it up. Good! Finally! And it's a one-point game. They've got to believe in themselves. Six Strasbourg. He had plenty of time to set his feet. And again, yep. he had missed a couple of shots, but you know what? He's a good shooter. The miss from Zimmerman there for the, for the rebound. Passes it outside. And Morgan comes up with the basketball. He's going to go in. He's going to dunk it. And I think they may have called a foul. Yep. They have indeed. They're already up seven. The final seconds ticking off the clock in the first half. And the foul called, it looks like, on Colson. Bullet pass from Omar Cook down low to Benite. Back in and wreaking havoc. Look at this again. Whipping it in there. Wow. Pruitt again rejected. And then Rubon again comes in and makes the play. Look at that. Goodness gracious. So Wainwright has the four fouls. He hands it off to DeAndre Lansdowne, who pulls up and gets it to drop. He was being guarded by Sasu Salin, and Salin looked like he kind of slipped as he yep. uh, tried to stop. And time now running out on Nizhny Novgorod. The pass. Oh, the throw down right at 
get the in from Rashid Suleiman, an exclamation mark. Oh boy, oh. terrific. Oh goodness me, is he okay? Help him up. No. Looks like he's hurt. Is that Tyrus McGee? Wow, look at that. <laughs> A little bit delayed. I was shocked. Well, here we are at halftime of the Basketball Champions League Final Four, excuse me, Final Eight. And uh, it is a close, low scoring affair between Herrera San Pablo Burgos and Pinar Karciaka. Burgos winning it 29 to 28. And Mark, uh, I'm sure you already know this, but the 57 point total in that first half is the lowest scoring first half ever in the final of the Basketball Champions League. The previous lowest in 2019 uh, when we were talking about watching in Antwerp, Virtus Bologna and uh, Tenerife scoring a total of 62 points in the first 20 minutes of that game. So this has been a low scoring game. And for Pinar Karciaka, they're 28 points, second lowest tally in the first half of a Basketball Champions League game uh, again, they had 27 uh, against in their game against Holon uh, back in March. Um, Jeff, that's also the, the first uh, basketball Champions League game in a final eight or final four with both teams with fewer than 30 points at halftime. So uh, it's a uh, low scoring was, game. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to say that the, the low scoring nature of that game in Antwerp was the fact that Tenerife couldn't score and, you know, Bologna had built a lead, whereas this one, it's toe to toe and uh, a one-point game so basketball games don't always have to as we've often said don't have to be high scoring affairs to be exciting because this every single play every time you come off a screen someone you know is out in the passing lane every time there's a ball screen someone's making you either use it in a particular way or trying to show you away from it defense is winning the day at the moment now that's one-off games unusual as such but uh with little time to prepare, it's very difficult to put a defensive system on the floor that breaks people down like these two teams have done. So it'd be interesting to see who makes the adjustments and uh, what adjustments those are. I think uh, Karasiaka have thrown a few different looks, whereas Burgos have, stayed, have pretty much stayed with a man-to-man. -man. So it'd be interesting to see. It's fascinating for, to watch, you know, trying to get advantage over your opponent. So. You know, and by with nine points, Burson with five rebounds, and uh, Henry has three assists. You said he was struggling, Jeff, but he's, he's helping in other ways. Um, but I, the, the big thing for me for Karis Yaka, and you've made the, the, the comment on a number of occasions, the contributions they're getting off the bench from guys that uh, you have, you'd have to go searching for their profiles, let's put it that way, has been phenomenal. And that's just uh, great work by those players and great confidence in them from, from the coach and staff. And what about uh, what about this, Mark? I mean, you've got the not only the, the the pride in winning a trophy or a cup or you know the, the hardware at stake and elevating your club and uh, putting it in the in the annals of European basketball history, but you've also got the money aspect of it. The winner will get a million euros, and the set, the team that loses yep. this game will get four hundred thousand. So, I mean, that's good as well. Uh, but uh, that's absolutely. A, a difference of 600,000. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the club ownership okay. is open. So far, Let's listen both to Coach teams Pignoroy. are struggling on offense. What do you expect in the second half? I'm, I'm happy with our defense, but uh, really, uh, in offense, the percentage, both, both teams is totally, no? But um, the small thing, the most important in the second half is the small thing. And we play hard and control the motions. Good luck, Coach. Thanks for your time. Thank you.
I'm sure he's not going to tell you the answer, but it would have been asked nice to, you know, how are you going to change it? You know, what are you going to do or anything like that? I mean, he's he's an incredibly astute coach offensively. He can find ways to get people open and, and get advances. It'd be interested to see if he has made a little few adjustments down the offensive end. Yeah, maybe he could have done that earlier, but he didn't want to give it away before halftime. It'll be harder to react for Pinar Karciaka uh, if he possibly, makes the adjustment at halftime. Absolutely possible. Yep. Coach, it's a very tough defensive-minded game so far. What was the main problem on offense to gain points? Uh, we found some position, but uh, too many mistakes in offensive parts. We missing too many shots, but defensive parts was good. Uh, we will see a second half. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's what they're taking aim at. And uh, that is a beautiful piece of uh, of hardware, silverware, the trophy of the Basketball Champions League. Tenerife won it in year one. Ike won it in year two. Virtus Blow in year three. And of course, Oreda San Pablo Burgos uh, won that trophy last year. Here they are trying to get it for the second year in a row. But Pinar Karciaka are tough opponents. I tell you what would be interesting, Jeff, is, is if, they, if uh, Penaroya changes his starting lineup uh, if, uh, and, and moves away from going with uh, Klavich and uh, Rivero because uh, he didn't get an advantage out of doing it offensively and defensively. The matchup on uh, Mbai is a tough one, so that, that'll tell you a lot about where, he's, where his mentality is. Looks like he's going to stay with what he started with in the first half. So... Uh, he thinks that's the answer, and uh, I'd be surprised. Going the other way, it looked like Bursam was going to start, which, uh, you know, again, is, uh, is a different look. But also, he was so effective at that small forward spot. He's two meters five. He really does give you some options. So, you know, Sarajar makes, uh, makes the change, and uh, Penaroya stays with the same. Interesting to see if that has any effect. I think Burs Bursam's uh, is going to be a tough ask for... For, uh, for Burgos. 20 minutes to go. Second half action underway here in Nizhny Novgorod between Herrera San Pablo Burgos and Pino Karciaka. And Haciel Rivero comes out and gets swatted by Raymar Morgan. That's a big message, first possession. Don't bring it in here. No, well, he's only got the two fouls, and now Morgan going to work, but not able to get it to drop. Rabaseda back in, and a foul called on Rabaseda. What do you think about that call? Un an unnecessary foul, I think, is. Yeah, he didn't need. Well, I'm not sure. I don't think he needed. He didn't need to do what he did. I know why he was trying to create the space. But he didn't need to do it. Now Morgan. Going to Kravich. Over to Embi. Open from three. I like the option, yeah, Jeff, because. They helped off and by, which, uh, and then Morgan recognized it and gave him the ball, just didn't make the shot. Well, that's what Sarija was saying right before the half. Rivero this time patiently gets in there and shoots it over Raymar Morgan. Target and uh, look at Rivera. What a rebound that was on the offensive blast. And then uh, Medijan. Oh, they wow. call travel. And uh, Pinuroya can't quite believe it. I couldn't believe it either. He does great to get the first rebound because he stays active. Ah, he does travel. Well spotted. Yeah, yeah. He shuffled his feet. Yep. 
Yeah. Shot his feet before he then made, went back up. You know, so that's why Pedroia can't understand it because he wasn't looking at it then. And this time, Embai decides to go to the basket and now called on uh, on Rivero. Sometimes he needs to slow it down for us to see it. And yeah, there's no doubt he left uh, Morgan and barged right into Embai. I think there is going to be a moment, Mark, when. Uh, yeah, it's not so much that Sek Henry is struggling. It's just that he can't get his opportunities. But I think there's going to come a moment when he does get some opportunities. Rivera, meanwhile, yeah. with three fouls. And in many ways, Jeff, uh, they, they're better with Horton than one of the two bigs in terms of that, that four and five spot. I think that's... Uh, in many ways, that helps. Yeah, I was about to say, might do him a favor. Getting him out, yeah. but Tony Taylor! And usually, the best things that are happening to Pino Karciaka is when they do attack the basket. Yep. Just got to move the ball so they can get a, an advantage as such before they attack it if they can. Wow, Kravich got into the lane to throw it down. Uh, wasn't able to dunk it, but he was fouled. So foul number three on Raymar Morgan. Well, both Rivera and Morgan with three fouls. As you mentioned earlier, Morgan was able to play with the foul trouble uh, previously, so Coach will have some confidence that he can leave him out there. Lead goes back to two points. Kravich, remember, won it with Virtus Bologna in year three of the Basketball Champions League. He won it last year with Burgos. Going for number three, he makes both free throws. Tony Taylor over to Embi. This two won it with Virtus as well. Here's Sek Henry. Here he comes. We knew it was coming, and it's short. And a foul called on Tony Taylor. Number 21, Tony Taylor. He's not in Jeff, but trouble. Sek Henry trying to create. You're going to get the foul on the loose ball after the, 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 the shot, but. Henry's going to is starting to look for his three as opposed to we you are know, wait to try and come off screens and get an advantage. So he's just got to be patient and run with it. Ravich rushed up the shot, was able to get the basketball back. Look out to McFadden. You know he's eager to put it up. He does, and it's a long rebound. And again, another attempt, and this time the putback by Kravich is good. Five-point advantage now for Burgos. Oh, beautiful find, and Medijan Pearson goes up as Rabaseda was down on the ground. Couldn't, uh, couldn't get there and defend that shot. And now a foul McFadden on... Uh, Fouling Raymar Morgan. What was it? Battling for position. I, I didn't see it. Uh, I, 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 I'm sure when we get the replay, he's going to have done so. It's going to be right because there's no reason for the referee not to call that. It's right in front of him, and uh, must have been. There must have been something. I guess the odd thing is he's a smaller guy trying to post up the big guy. So Penny yeah. Roy is like, "Are you kidding me?" But then again, I think you're right. Anyway, have to look at it. Here's Tony Taylor for three. It'll tie it if it goes. It does not, but there for the follow is I'm not in by. He can't get the drop either. And uh, Sarija is just frustrated because he knows he's getting decent looks and they're just not putting him away. Renfro, meanwhile, he puts his away. Renfro with 11 points. Yep. And offensive foul turns it back over to Burgos. 
Pearson setting the pick, attempting to. See that just so much movement, extension of the arms. Exactly what referees have been told to try and clean up. And uh, a turnover thrown behind Kravitz. Pearson, meanwhile, and then he is fouled by Rabaceda. That'll be Rabaceda's fourth foul, right? I think. Yeah, Rabaceda picks up number four, so he's going to come out. Substitution on both sides. Mumbai takes a seat. Personal fall, Rabaceda. Team fourth. What was Sarge saying? Sure the coach... You don't have to shoot it. Pass well, it back I'm... out, maybe? No, I, th I think, well, maybe. Uh, but I do think, like, the when he got the offensive rebound, tried to bank it, he's almost like second guessing himself. You know, he just didn't get it and, and let it oh, go right. and, and in the flow. And you can see Sarah Jar saying, let it go, let it go. But I think you're right about the fact he doesn't have to take the, the one where he's uh, off one pass and not in rhythm. But I think everybody's in that place because there's no rhythm to the game. Everybody's having to oh. force shots if you want. Good steal by Raymar Morgan. Here's some missed two free throws. Good Here's Morgan shot. going down the lane. <laughs> now side and uh, the three pointer no good. And against Seth Henry now on the open floor. And he is not. Oh, he misses the shot. He hustles back. Uh, but McFadden gets the rebound. So, boy, I tell you, Sarija took a, took a, will certainly have a few more gray hairs after this. But he took a tough one, didn't they? Three guys back. And yeah, he maybe should have made it, but it was a tough one. Well, the only good thing for Pino Karciaka is that Burgos were also missing some threes. But if this one goes, no, nope, he's not going to. Yes, he is. If it goes, it's a six point lead, and it bounces over the backboard. It's a foul on the play. I think they've caught a foul on the on the rebound against uh, Karasiaka. Against Karasiaka, I think. Yeah. yeah. And Watch both coaches Kennedy. are like, there you go. There's the elbow. Yeah, he just kind of raised, yeah, he raised his left yeah. arm. Well, they want to see if it's an unsportsmanlike. Interesting. We have to upgrade it. I need a different angle. This one there. This one there on the left. Be a tough one if they have great this job. Oh, let's see if he. Oh, I don't know. Looking at yeah, it from that one. Created by number 17 white, and the heat is on the on the neck. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Go. 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 It's C2 and sportsman like. Yeah. Okay, let's go for a uh, C2 number 17. Number 11 push up. Seven, elbow two. Well, I think they got it right, Mark. I mean, I, I didn't yeah, see it in live absolutely. action and, and even on the no. first replays, but when you slow it down, you can see he definitely threw an elbow. Yeah, and it's even though these, these guys have the opportunity to use replays and stuff, and they they use it perfectly. But the thing, the theme that always comes through those conversations is, is it a basketball action? And and that's easy for referees now. If they don't think it's a basketball action in this in any, any situation, unsportsmanlike like foul. You don't have to interpret. Is it a basketball action? Yeah. And now it compounds the yeah compounds what the situation is in the whole game. People are not in any rhythm. At some point, you're like take a breath, just execute, get something that you really want. If you've got a play that gives you something, get that rhythm going, and, and then you're fine for the game. At the moment, no team has any rhythm whatsoever. 
Look at the hands up by Kennedy. He makes amends by getting the steal. And here he goes down the lane. And there for the follow was Medijan Bearson. Great attacking play by DJ Kennedy after the steal. Yeah. Shows why you got to hustle three back guys. as well along with your teammates. Yeah, three guys following that play. Teresiaka. Salvo. Wow. He missed the two free throws. No problem. He'll hit a three. <laughs> yeah, obviously too close. That free throw line with no one guarding you is too easy. <laughs> Guarded by Kravic. Again, it looks like uh, the, the unsportsmanlike has kind of lit a fire under Kennedy, yes. uh, but he wasn't able to get that on the offensive glass. Uh, they, they must be saving Victor Benitez for something, or. He may, I, I don't, he doesn't look like he's carrying anything. He hasn't played yet, Jeff, in this. Uh... No, he hasn't. He's, um... Coach is going to pick his moment, I guess. McFadden, meanwhile, misses another one. His tough game continues. Zach Henry. Uh, no one else touched the ball, game Jeff. tough continues. That, yeah, it can't be good if no one else touches the ball for him. Omar Cook. Jeff, everybody away from the basketball offensively is just getting more and more static. It's the defense just appears to have not worn them down, but appears to have just slowed everybody up so that they're not anything that gets you moving there, any set that would actually get some uh, ac activity away from the basketball. We get every, all five guys moving. It's got to be worth looking at. At the moment, the ball is with the guard, and everybody knows where the ball is, and everything is challenged. Well, after that second Henry miss, Sadi just saying, share the ball. Yeah, exactly what we're talking about, Jeff. You can share it and set screens for each other you could end up or should end up hopefully with more of an advantage when you catch it and you should then get something that's gonna be an easier shot to make because at the moment apart from those breakaways that people are missing shots are getting harder and harder to make what well, it's just such a men mental situation there in terms of people's confidence to do what they do well Thank you, brother. Thanks. Two minutes, 31 seconds. We're in the third quarter of this gold medal game. Pino Koshieka, 36. Hereda, San Pablo Burgos, 40. Well, it has been a grinded out game. Yep. Low scoring halftime, low scoring here in the third quarter. And maybe the good news for Pino Karciak is that Burgos have not yet, they have not turned it up a notch really like they did in their other two semifinals. And you can see Sek <laughs> Henry just so desperate to get in the flow. At least he's earned a well, trip Jeff, he's on the free throw line. He's on the free throw line now. If, if there's a place you can just you know, take a breath and get your rhythm and, and, and get your stroke going, make your free throws, get some confidence that way. Both teams under 20, 16 and 18% from the three-point line. Both teams 40% and under on the two-point line. It's it's uh, it's a it's a tr it's a trial out there. Well, he does get one of the two to go. To go. Yeah. Maybe by seeing that. I hate to think what have happened, Jeff, if Idem is both, then he's just going to go looking for even more shots, tougher shots. Oh, well, we've, seen, we've seen some other players miss too. Salvo, Burson. 
Yep. It's just been that kind of game. So your man, Vitor Benite, now back in, finally. Cook, open, go! Well, cometh the man, cometh the hour. Maybe uh, Omar Cook is about ready to heat up. Again, make the pass, get an advantage. The, the defense reacted. Cook's got time and space to knock the three down. Oh, so Serma just kind of lost control of it. I'm not sure yeah. if he dribbled it off the defender's foot. Sacco. No, he just a little bump. Which, uh, I, I, from the other angle, it looked like he lost his footing before the bump. But big 135, Jeff. Though at the end of the third, Burgos get a couple away here, and, and it gets towards a 10-point game. In a low-scoring game, that 10-point margin is big. Yeah, I don't, and with I don't Cook like, and Benite, it's it's going to be nice for, for Burgos. I don't like Peter Karczowski's chances if they have to come back from a double-digit yeah. deficit. Omar Cook and Victor Benitez at the one and the two. Burgos look a little bit more smoother, a little bit more uh, in control of what they're trying to run. There's no panic, wow. there's no rush. The only thing that's the same is they can't make a free throw, but the last two possessions have been under control for Burgos. They've got a shot that they'd like to take. And that's just the, the, two, the, the, two, the two veterans, the two experienced guys in the backcourt seem to have just come in and just settled themselves down. Well, the lead now seven points uh, for Burgos. That is the biggest lead of the game for either team. Henry over to Raymar Morgan, had the double pump, follows up his miss. Sacco knocks it off the rim. It'll stay at this end. Sec Henry's taking the time to get up. He's holding the ankle. Um, Smart thing when I was to take him out with a minute to go anyway. He does look he's gonna have to take him out, can't walk at all. Oh yeah, he oh, yeah. Uh, came down on Sacco. Sacco. Yeah. Well, we saw Barreto get injured in that first game for Zaragoza. He was able to go to halftime get healed up. Um, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, uh, with the type of game this is, and with Sec Henry not really getting off, it's not a devastating loss at this point. No. That was kind of the what I drew from the, the expression from uh, Sarija. Here's Raymar Morgan. From the elbow! Man, they need him now. They need Morgan to get a lot of touches because they can trust him with the ball. And a big time shot. Taylor, I mean, this, this is, you just feel like right now is the moment that Burgos are, you know, have the opportunity. And they have not taken it. Benite, meanwhile, trying to take it back up to the biggest lead of the game, seven points. Burgos trying to become the second team in the Basketball Champions League to win the title. Excuse me, the first team to win it back-to-back. Uh, -back. Kennedy, front court. Taylor over to Morgan for three. And flying in, and the shooting struggles continue. And again, the last possession now of the quarter appears to be for Burgos. Benite from the arc. And that was long. So Karshiaka stay within seven points. Burgos 
46. Pino Karsiak at 39. Well, the numbers are a nightmare numbers for both teams in terms of their percentages, Jeff, and so it's, no one has any rhythm. We've been talking about it all the way through. These, uh, these third quarter best plays, which probably be on the defensive end, won't they? <laughs> it's a, there you go. The first one you see is a block. Uh, and we talked before the game about the contributions off the bench because Burgos, you know, in their championship winning uh, group, had 50 plus points off the bench. And the, the, we talked about them struggling because they were on, they were under 40, 40 points from the bench in their last uh, six games. Well. Karasiak have 11 and Burgos up 10 off the bench. No one's scoring. If you're a star, if you're off the bench, there's no, there's no rhythm. There's no second chance points. It's not as if anyone's being going to the glass hard. It's only four points and two points from second chance points. Only five points each from turnover. It's just a, an offensive, it's either an offensive horror show or it's a defensive masterclass. And in many ways, it is a defensive masterclass in terms of where the ball's being forced to go. It's a great example of how, how to contain and control the ball. It's a great example of how to get back in defensive transition as well, because no one's really able to get anything going in transition either. And now we've got a, we've almost got a 10-minute shootout. The only trouble is for Karasiaki, you're in a low-scoring game and you're starting that seven down. So. Uh, Win ugly, win cute, whatever it is. Now it just comes down to the win and being the Basketball Champions League champions. I think Burgos have got the right lineup because Benitez in the game. I think Taylor's going to have to really exert some influence over how Karasiaka gets shots. Because I don't think that Sec Henry is going to be able to help them. The ankle looked really sore. So, and then Bayer has got to have a full quarter like he had a first quarter. Then it's game on. Here we go. Final quarter. Well, fourth quarter underway, and again, Burgos, San Pablo Burgos leading it 46 to 39 over Peter Karsiaka. Sec Henry with just one point. Looks like he's getting ready to come back in. Tony Taylor gets into the paint, and a foul called on Omar Cook. They're going to blow the whistle. I, I, I do get a little frustrated when the referee sees the foul and chooses not to make the call. As uh, Taylor came off the, as he, as he swung through, he got a little, he got a little lump uh, and bump, and they, they, they started to blow and signal and then let him go because he got the ball. So the foul was on Sacco, in fact, and uh, Raymar Morgan missed uh, a layup. Oh, wow, wow. It is truly an offensive quagmire. You know, final of the Basel Champions League, Jeff. That must be about the fourth air ball in the game. from the three-point line, puts up the three, it's short. Organ chance to go to work in the low block, is fouled, and they'll be on the end line. So... Four-point game, Karasiaka on the baseline, 8.36 in the fourth. Taylor's going to inbound. Burson will come and receive. They turn that down. They're going to have to go long. And by has it, puts it on the floor. To the, oh, throws it down and just hammers it home. Two-point game. 
and Karasiaka for the first time in a long time have some momentum. Benitez will take the ball screen. Cook looks inside, they can't find Rivero. Picked up Benitez, tries to get a little space, stops, pops in the lane, gets the roll to two. And eight to go. And Taylor, who really does have to take control of this there for Karasiaka. Puts it on the floor, breaks it down, all the way to the ring, off the glass, gets the drop, tough finish. Taylor. In traffic, back to a two-point game. Port with a little hesitation, goes to the right hand, takes the tough angle, gets it to roll. And Ken Horton, all of a sudden, scoring becomes not necessarily easy, but it starts to tick over. Well, they offer the three. Walker puts it up, fills it up from deep. Seven to go, one point game. Raymar Morgan goes to 13 personal on two from three from the on the arc. Omar Cook will get in the lane, stops, pops, can't get it to go. And Karasiaka have a chance to lead it to the glass for two. Sick. <laughs> Whistle on the plate. Fourth foul, be amazed if they sat him. It's gonna lift, look inside and bite. In the lane. Sek Henry goes down that burst and turn around with a right hand for two. And Burgos will take the timeout. Karasaki will lead it. 53-51 on the back. Best out with a turnaround with the right hand. A full team five start to the fourth quarter for Pina Kalasiaka. And Burgos want to talk it over. And Coach Penaloya wants to talk about it. Henry still sitting there after the timeout. Karasiaka could go with a the trap. They lead it by two. River Rivero is the man who relieves the pressure. Renfro back in. 
will take it. Takes the high screen. Kravitz will dive. Renfro moves it on. Benite just about hangs on. Renfro's got to put it up from deep. It's short. Great job by Levero on the glass. Pulls the offensive rebound. Tries to barrel his way up. Gets the two. And one. That's just sheer will by S.O. Levero. Just powers his way through. Chance to restore Burgos the one point lead, which he does. Henry moves it on. Three is short, but the foul is called. And Bayer will go to the three throw line. Klavich with a personal. That committing that cardinal sin of fouling the jump shooter. And by misses the first, has to just forget about the moment here. This is, this is thousands of free throws over a career. This is why you've taken those thousands to be on the free throw line in a big game. Ties it at 54. One for three, and we're tied with five to go. A five-minute shootout to decide who is the 2021 Basketball Champions League champions. Great seal. Builds the double team, gets it out of the post. Benite has it out top. Steps back for the three. Count it! Victor Benite does what Victor Benite does best. Strokes the three. Henry needs a pass, finds the pass. By lines it up, gets in the lane. Oh, two is no good. Klavich knocks it away. And quite rightly, Renfro says, give me the ball. Benite flares, catches, can't get the three to drop. And Karasiaka dodged the bullet. Far side of the ring, Henry off the glass, over the top. It's still physical. When does Morgan return? When does Taylor get back? Oh, the alley oop for Klavich for two, throw that one down, and they, they get a five point lead. 3.54 to go in the fourth timeout, Karasiaka. They had Klavich with the highlight. Great weight on the pass. And Klavich looking for his third Basketball Champions League title. Finishes the play. And doesn't it just feel like that?
24 seconds in the fourth quarter of his golden game. San Paolo Burgos, 59. Pilar Karasiaka, 54. So important for Karasiaka after the timeout to get something they want. Morgan back in the game will hand it off. Taylor swings through, gets it on the curl, gets his feet set, turns down the three. Sack. Moves it on. Five for three. Count it. They were patient. Multiple screens swung through by. Steps off the screen and pops, knocks down the three, two-point game, three twenties to go. The press just to take time out of the possession. Renfro will move it on. Rivero will set the screen. They're going to have to stay at home though. Rivero in the lane, nowhere to go. Five on the possession. Klavic down the lane, fumbles, going to be a 24 violation. Karasiak could come up with a huge defensive series. 3-0-4 to go, a chance to tie it or lead it on this possession. They're going to bring Taylor will swing through again. Probably there he goes. He'll come off the two screens, gets his feet set, turns down the three again, attacks it in the lane, puts a floater up. Went with the touch play as opposed to back in the three. Great challenge on the shot by Klavich. Renfro out top. In the lane, good kick. Lavero for three. His short offensive rebound. They get another look at it. Benite. Top Benite has it, gives it up. Renfro puts the floater up, gets the whistle. Taylor picks up the personal. <laughs> Chance to make this a two possession game. Can't do it. Offensive rebound by Levero, though. Dorbanite, guarded by Taylor. Settles for the three, short. Ah, it's the breakaway. Bias just gonna throw that one down for two as he leaves the runway. Renfro in the lane, needs a pass, we'll get it back. In the lane, that's going to be another violation. The 24 violates, the 24 second, the missed shot, and then the turnover. And Karasiaka, 59-60. Have the opportunity to lead it on this possession. Henry will. Morgan on the pick and pop is short with a three. Interesting choice of option. Backed himself, could knock it down. Rivero. Guarded by on fire, moves it on to Renfro. Benite on the curl, gets to the foul line, steps back to the two, is short. And Bayer comes down with a defensive rebound. We've got a minute to go. We've got a one-point game. Settles for the three, is short. That's back-to-back -back early threes for Karasiaka. Renfro 
trying to run it down. Nine on the possession. Renfro attacks it, gets all the way to the ring for two. And give Burgos the three point advantage with 34 seconds remaining. And when Karasiaka settled for the three, Alex Renfro just took it hard to the glass. And off the glass for two. Time out. Alex Renfro has given San Pablo Burgos the smallest of breathing spaces. Wow, what a finale to a season like no other. Three point game. Take it full court, so they get the 24, got a whistle on the plate, and they're fouled, and they had a foul to give. Sec Henry shows doesn't get, they're going to go and buy. As it knocked away by Horton, recovered though by Henry, moves it on. Taylor had the chance to shoot it, chose not to. Sec Henry for three, he is long, what a rebound. And Bai goes back up in traffic, whistle on the play, and they call the travel. And comes down, goes up, comes down. The San Pablo Burgos will take the time out. In spite of a 20 to 16 fourth quarter, San Pablo Burgos. Are 15 seconds away from back to back basketball Champions League championships. Uh, the expectation will be if Karasiaka can't steal it on the inbound pass, they'll foul, which will at least give them the opportunity for either the misses or the quick shot the other way, which will at least keep this alive. They cannot let San Paolo Burgos take time out of the last 15. Steal off foul on the inbound. They can't foul before the ball comes in. That would make it unsportsmanlike. They have to make a legitimate attempt at the basketball. Here we go. Oh, they go long. They're going to take it out. They're going to have to foul. There's the foul. Well, they almost, almost forced the five-second call. Same situation, same circumstance. Got it to steal it. Or foul on the inbound. But they're not going to foul. Foul number 17. 
Took him four seconds to foul. And substitution. Back onto the court, Chapira Maceda. And for Kaushika, number 22, Sek Henry. Replacing Luran Pitti. Up any take to try and ice this to make it a two possession game. Which he just about manages to do. It's a very friendly roll. Goes two for two from the line, no timeout remaining. And Sek Henry goes off the leg. And San Pablo Burgos. We'll just have to pretty much get it in. Unfortunate. And what a way for it to all end for Karasiaka. And that'll do it. And then a San Pablo Burgos. Overcome Kalisiaka 64 to 59 to become the Basketball Champions League champions for 2021 and become the first team to ever defend the Basketball Champions League title to win it twice. And what a final, what an effort by Kalisiaka. The numbers, the only two that matter, are 64 and 59. Burgos just refused to give up on the title they won last year in
and gentlemen, the closing ceremony of the 2021 Basketball Champions League Final Eight will start shortly. Now we're going to get straight into the presentation of the trophies, the MVPs to the officials. What a run it's been for our Karasiaka. Second Turkish team to make the championship game. Phenomenal semi-final comeback over Zaragoza. And they just came up short in an absolute battle of a championship game. Defensive effort from both teams was phenomenal. And that's what it's all about. The beautiful Basketball Champions League trophy that very shortly will be returning to Burgos. Andre Karolenko would have enjoyed that one. One of the great defenders. Well, wow, probably be one of the great players, but a tremendous now, the closing player. Ladies and gentlemen, now begins the closing ceremony of the 2021 Basketball Champions League. To present the awards to the referees, please welcome Mr. Carl Taller. So we will start treasurer. with the awards to tonight's match officials to the referees, and they will be presented by Mr. Carl Trella, the FIBA Europe and treasurer. The four referees of the gold medal game. Edi Viator, Ademir Surapovic, and Johan as the officials Russo, come forward, and Alexander, yeah, just take Lizic. a moment to reflect on the as Edi Viator. This is the first round up. The quality of the officiating, as always across the Basketball Champions League, has been at the highest level. But most importantly, it's been, it doesn't matter which crew is on a game, there's been a level of consistency that's probably been the and best it's ever seen. Please welcome Mr. Kamil Novak, FIBA Executive Director of Europe, and Mr. Sergei Kushenko, President of the, the VTB League. Silver medals will be presented by Mr. Kamil Novak, the FIBA Executive Director of Europe, and Sergei. Shenko, who is the president of the BTB League. And silver medalist of the 2021 Basketball Champions League from Turkey, Pinar Karşiyaka. So Pinar Karşiyaka will come forward. Semir Erdem, their captain, leads them out. And you can't have a great final without two teams, and they've given us a great final. They came close, very close with that fourth quarter run. But ultimately, they're going to have to settle for the runners up berth. The 
They are a live contender in Turkey going into the playoffs. And you can see why. Quality from top to bottom. Brilliantly coached. Sarajah and his staff should be incredibly proud of that performance, even though they're going to be a very, very disappointed organization, as you always are when you come up the one game short. rest of the support staff for Pinaya Karasjaka. His great run, his great season comes to an end with the defeat. After three seasons in the league and two quarterfinals, they finally made it not only to the semifinals, but to the final in 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our silver medalists from Turkey, Pinar Karsiaka. Pinar Karsiaka. Runners up in the 2021 Basketball Champions League. Uh, what a final they gave us. When they reflect on this season, they should look back with great pride in how they have almost reached the pinnacle in the Basketball Champions League. One game short. And you know that's going to fire up an organization to try and go one better when we all start again in 2021-22. And now to present the Basketball Champions League Final 8 MVP trophy. Please welcome Mr. Andrei we Kirilenko, President the of the Russian Trophy. Basketball Federation. For the winners, we will General present the MVP of Trophy. And Andrei Karolinko, who is the President there of the Russian Poland, Basketball Federation, and Sergei Panov, of the, the General Manager of Disney, Champions will make that League presentation. From the team of Hereda San Pablo Burgos, the number eight, Vitor Benite. Oh, Vitor Benite. Averaged over 20 points a game in the quarterfinal and semi-final. Huge performance. Down the end of that final. And is our final eight MVP. But it's a fundamental to anything that Burgos have achieved. Down the end of the game, his presence on the court alone has steadied that ship and got him over the line. But what a performance, not just today, but over the whole three games. Basketball Champions League, please welcome Mr. Amanenyong, FIBA president. And the trophies and medals for the winners will be presented by Mr. Amanenyong, the FIBA president. To Patrick Kamenios, the CEO of the Basketball Champions League, and Mr. Andre Betin, the Vice Governor of Nizhny Novgorod. Ladies and gentlemen, first place and gold medalist of the 2021 Basketball Champions League for the second time in a row from Spain, Hereda San Pablo Burgos. So San Pablo Burgos. Stride out as the first team to win the Basketball Champions League trophy twice, but the first team to also win it back to back. A Champions League journey started with qualifiers in last season's competition, and now ends for this year anyway with back to back trophies. Everything that the Basketball Champions League aspires to and achieves, represented by this team, a team that through their performance on the floor, qualified for the competition, a team that then wins the competition last year and then comes through a unbelievably tough 
season. The most competitive ever. To win the trophy for the second time in a row. What a performance by the team from the ACB in Spain. The 64-59 winners over Pina Karasiaka. They go to San Pablo Burgos. Collect their medals. And will now. Please welcome Mr. Amane Young, FIBA President and Patrick Cominos, Chief Executive Officer of the Basketball Champions League. We'll prepare to collect what the whole season is about. Tobanite receives from Patrick Caminos and Mr. Niang the Basketball Champions League trophy. Rejoins his teammates and begins what will be a huge celebration here and a probably an even more uh, massive celebration in Burgos in Spain. San Pablo Burgos, Basketball Champions League winner in 2020 and 2020-2021. Congratulations to them. But congratulations to every single organization that's got through this season. What a performance by Burgos. Back-to-back -back Basketball Champions League champions. Those pictures are already all around the world. Uh, Coach Penaloya, it's always tough to make it to the top and win a trophy. In many ways, it's even tougher to come back and repeat. He's added to the roster and he's added real quality, but he adds it in such a way that you know this team is going to be back again to compete next year. There's one of those moments where you just need to reflect, and that's exactly what he's doing right there. Let's not forget, Victor Klavich, this is the third time he has been a Basketball League, Basketball Champions League winner. Twice now with Burgos, uh, once with Bologna. They're gonna cut nets, they're gonna sing, they're gonna celebrate. Uh, Penaroya gets the normal launching into the air. Well, here are the highlights of what was, let's call it a battle, because that's what it was. From the first play to the last play. Every single point was a tough one. The defensive effort by both sets of players was just phenomenal. The MVP, Victor Benite. Took the ball to where he does his work. It's a two-point percentage across these three games. Up there in the 60s. 
Alex Renfro. Well, they got, they got more out of their backcourt, you've got to say, than Karasiaka got out of theirs. The combination, Renfro and Benite. Omar Cook in the rotation. And the 39-year-old played his huge part in the win. But Karasiaka, when they took it to the ring, especially early and then in the fourth quarter, what really did come close. I don't think, apart from two breakaways in the fourth quarter, there was an uncontested two points from the field in the entire final. all scorers but it wasn't enough and the signs at the end as Klavic says as my third but Burgos is their second the whole organization and the whole organization from the basketball champions league every club it's been a massive success of a season against the backdrop of so many challenges and that's what it means It's been marvellous. What an amazing job they've done here in Novgorod. But for another year, it's over. We've had a great time here. And from Novgorod, it's good. Bye from me, Mark Clark, and Jeff Taylor. And we'll see you next season for more action from the Basketball Champions League. Number six. Number five is over. Let's look forward to the sixth season of the Basketball Champions League. But for now... Hope you've enjoyed it. Good night.